Hey everybody, I guess you probably figured out by the title of the video, we've had some pretty major deer damage in our strawberries. Um, we've got our 3D deer fence up. It's always done pretty good for us in the past, um, but evidently once the deer figure out that they can get through it, a certain group of deer, um, they once they get it kind of figured out, they just keep coming. So. Uh, we had some deer problems early in the season when the plants were very young and we got out here and we shot a bunch of deer and we thought that we had put enough hunting pressure on them that we kind of had them under control but uh, you can't kill all the deer and evidently this is a really bad choice of location for where we should have put these berries uh, because we've just not been able to keep the deer out of them. Uh, as you can see, two weeks ago Holly was out here with somebody looking at some weeds. Weeds really the only the issue that we've had and um, the berries look good two weeks ago and I came back out here a couple days ago and we have crowns. That's all we have. Crowns and destroyed plastic so the only the last resort and the only hope of having any crop off these berries at all is to cover them up um, evidently that's the only way we're going to keep a deer out of them so what i'm fixing to do is i've got the air blast sprayer i just dewinterized it and mixed up a batch of fungicides and a little bit of uh, volunteer a low rate which is kind of like post. Um, it just kills grass. That's the only thing it'll kill. And I mixed a real low rate of it so that we can stunt this ryegrass. We don't want to kill it because um, then we will have nothing but weeds in our row metals. But we're going to stunt it with a half rate of volunteer. Spray these crowns, <laughs> that's all that's left here, with uh, some captan fungicide to help protect them because the covers create kind of a greenhouse environment and anytime you have a hot moist environment you uh, invite disease so we're gonna get these sprayed give them time um, wait till the re-entry interval is over on the spray and then holly is going to come tomorrow with some help and get these berries covered up so if they've got a cover over them, the deer can't eat them. I'm not sure if they're going to recover fully or how much they will recover at this point because at this time of the year, we're here in the first week of January, they should be about the size of a pie pan for us, for our area. And we have crowns with no leaves. So we are going to uh, cover them up and uh, cross our fingers, pray for the best. So our plan for today was originally that I was going to continue to work on the farmhouse and Holly was going to have some help to put all these row covers on so that I could keep going over there. But uh, help didn't work out so this is the help. I get told occasionally that the solution for uh, the farm labor problem that we have is you just need to hire Americans. Well, we tried today. These are the only Americans I could find that were willing to work today. Okay. 
so like I was talking about the other day at this point our only hope for salvaging this crop at all and uh, being able to pick any strawberries is for us to put these covers on um, to do two things right now one is keep the deer out and two is to uh, create a sort of a greenhouse environment these row covers will increase the temperature at night two to five degrees and during the day it can increase the temperature up to 20 degrees but it's going to keep them from getting heat down and it's going to hopefully um, put the gas on them get them going So we've tried just a little bit of everything in the past, trying to put these row covers on and get them to stay. We tried blocks of firewood, we tried rocks, um, boards, cinder blocks. We used to use cinder blocks and they worked out okay, but they were heavy. They was bad about tearing the covers. And the, finally, we uh, wised up last year and bought a hundred, I think it was a hundred, maybe 200 of these um, nylon mesh bags they're like feed sacks but they're black so that the sun don't break them down and uh, it rains so much now that the river gets out about once a week so we got a steady supply of uh, sand around here and most people are happy to get rid of it so we uh, actually holly went and filled all these sandbags up and this has been by far the best thing that we've ever covered strawberries with holds great um, the wind rarely ever blows the cover out from underneath these sandbags so that's what we're using to hold the row covers on now Undoubtedly, at this point, uh, hindsight's always 2020, but we shouldn't have planted strawberries next to this big cut over here. Uh, we were just asking for trouble to buy doing that. But we can't do anything about it now. All we can do is, um, all we can do. So, we, uh, the thought process of planting them here is this is excellent soil and it was uh, good access to water and uh, by the fall we had to plant them here because it was the only piece we had left virgin and hadn't sprayed any pre-emerge on um, we prepared it for strawberries but moving forward we're going to change gears and change our plan for the future um, and probably going to start relaying the strawberries in the same field and just uh, start fumigating every year but we've got a field that um, is right on the road on the corner of two roads that's pretty good soil and uh, because of its location right there on the road it doesn't see the deer pressure that we will out here in the middle of the farm so um, probably going to be planting strawberries there from now on but you uh, just farm and learn. Some of the lessons you learn are pretty expensive. So I can read y'all's mind looking at this patchwork of row covers that we got going on out here and um, wondering what the heck the deal is with it. Well, we used to, when we first started planting strawberries, plant it in 100 foot long blocks. So all but a couple of our row covers are 100 foot long we cut them that way when we got them it came on like a 500 foot roll and we cut them down to 100 foot long by 50 foot wide we plant our strawberries nine rows wide which comes up to 45 feet 
That way we've got a couple extra two and a half feet on each side to sandbag it down. Um, and we used to cut them 100 foot long to cover the ends. But we've now switched to planting strawberries on uh, three, two and 300 foot long rows. The covers are very expensive, so we can't afford to just go buy all new covers just because we changed the length. So we're just making do with what we got. We're using 100 foot and we just patch it over the next one, sandbag it in the middle and keep covering. So that's why this field's all like a patchwork. And another thing with that, if you get more than about 200 foot in a roll of this row cover, I about can't handle it by myself. And it's nice to be able to throw a roll on your shoulder and go where you need to go. If you had if you tried to put 300 foot on a roll, like we're doing out here, the way we keep them in rolls, um, you about have to have two people to be able to handle them. And it would get pretty cumbersome to try to fold it and roll it. So um, that's why we are keeping it at max length at 200. From now on, we'll be 200. I think we'll probably, um, this is the first year we've ever laid plastic this long. I think from now on, we will make all of our rows 200 foot just for ease of covering. Well, the deer are gonna have a little bit of a hard time eating on them now. Um, hopefully it's not too late and we can get them back going and get some foliage on them. We'll see how it goes. I'll keep y'all posted. Thank you for watching. Bye.